Reliable machines requires a reliable controller, and that controller needs to be programmed. That requires software. When we look at IT, there is a constant, a new trend that actually is taking the software from the computer up into the cloud. Now, Sven, how are we actually reacting at Beckhoff to that trend? Indeed, that's a very, very good question. And um, this presentation is all about our um, first cloud service, which is called Twinket Cloud Engineering. So the question is, what is Twinket Cloud Engineering all about? So it's about running the Twinket automation software in the cloud. So customers can log into the back of website using their own user credentials, and then they can rent Twinket instances um, on this portal. So what is a Twinket instance? So basically an instance is typically a virtual machine image um, which you can provision, which you can start and run and operate, um, which has pre-installed Twinket engineering tools uh, inside. But the real advantage is that those instances can also be connected to physical controller hardware in the field via a secure transport channel. So there are uh, plenty of communication channels available that allow you to do so. And this basically allows an easy deployment of automation programs um, to the physical controller hardware. Okay, Sven, now that uh, we know that TwinCAD is running in the cloud, what uh, devices is it supporting, actually? Mm -hmm. So basically, it's platform independent, um, So, which means you can use any kind of uh, physical device uh, to connect to the platform, to work with the instances, to connect to an instance. And I brought three screenshots here uh, for three different device types. So first of all, we have our laptop here. Um, which is uh, where you see the dashboard um, with three instances that are currently being um, created um, for, for this user account. Um, you can then use the dashboard to start stop instances, to create additional instances or to connect to an instance. And um, what happens after a connection establishment to an instance is what you see here in this screenshot on the tablet PC. So actually a web browser window is opened and we tunnel the remote desktop connection through the web browser, which means you do not need to install additional software components, additional tools. Um, you can simply work with a web browser on an operating system and hardware platform um, that you desire. Of course, it's also possible to um, use this on a smartphone device and you see that here. Um, and this side of, of uh, the, the screen. And um, yeah, so this is how the, the view looks like uh, from a smartphone application. So Sven, what modules and components are actually in that cloud-based machine? Mm -hmm. So inside of a virtual machine image um, that we provide to our customers is the regular TwinCAD software pre-installed. So which means the TwinCAD engineering, so with, with Visual Studio, uh, the TwinCAD runtime, TwinCAD analytics, TwinCAD IoT, all the different functions that we have within TwinCAD can be used uh, within this operating system image. But we also include source control capabilities uh, within a TwinCAD cloud engineering image that customers can then use to collaborate with on-premise user accounts. Sven, so out there, there might be a lot of users who are thinking, since uh, TwinCat is now located in the cloud, is my cybersecurity or are the cybersecurity aspects actually compromised? What countermeasures have we taken to avoid that? Mm -hmm. Of course, cybersecurity is a very big topic, um, especially when you um, when you have your TwinCAD automation project in the cloud and then you want to download it to a physical controller hardware. So as I said earlier, this is a very uh, important part within TwinCAD Cloud Engineering so that you have connectivity protocols that allow you to connect a physical um, controller hardware with a TwinCAD Cloud Engineering instance. So, so there are two um, transport protocols that we use for this. So one is secure ADS, the other is ADS over MQTT. And both connectivity protocols have a very tight integration into the TwinCAD automation system and its workflow. So you can, for example, use secure ADS in uh, direct connectivity scenarios where you want to couple uh, one physical device with one TwinCAD Cloud Engineering instance, so it's like a one-to-one -one, um, communication scenario. And secure ADS is basically um, an extension to the regular ADS connectivity protocol. And it has been extended with security mechanisms, which are based on TLS, which is a standard in the IT world. So secure ADS is fully transparent to the TwinCAD application. 
And so is also ADS over MQTT. So ADS over MQTT, on the other hand, makes totally sense when you have end-to-end -end connectivity scenarios. So where you have multiple underlying devices, as shown here, um, and multiple uh, Twinkit Cloud engineering instances, and you want to connect all the different uh, Twinkit applications with each other. So in that scenario, you have a message broker in between, which is decoupling the applications, and which is also using TLS um, for transport layer security. So I also earlier talked about uh, the collaboration scenario where you want to want to have multiple user accounts working on the same project. So for example, you could have twin, uh, Twinkit Cloud engineering user accounts that are working with the Twinkit Cloud engineering instance, and you can also have them collaborate with on-premise users. So there are source control capabilities based on Git, um, which allow you to share projects um, between cloud users and on-premise users. Okay, Sven, so we s we've seen actually that TwinCat has a lot of features in the, in the cloud. Now, could you actually uh, give us an example, a concrete example of uh, what we've done so far? Mm -hmm. So you, you said correctly that TwinCat has a lot of functionalities and there are plenty of TwinCat functions available to uh, solve almost any kind of, of use case imaginable. So I think a very good use case uh, for TwinCat Cloud Engineering is our own analytics platform. So with our TwinCat analytics, we have created a very powerful platform to analyze machine data. So there are different algorithms available to analyze or, or transform process data uh, from different machine applications. So the direct integration of the TwinCat um, analytics into our engineering platform allows an easy getting started with TwinCat analytics. So users don't have to uh, learn new programming languages or a new engineering environment to get to know TwinCat analytics and actually use it for their machine application. So the analytics software tools can also be installed and executed within a TwinCat Cloud engineering instance. So and there are plenty of functionalities inside of TwinCat analytics that allow you to automatically generate PSC code, for example, in order to run your an analytics network in a 24-7 environment, um, or also um, integrate the Twinkit Analytics project um, seamlessly into your PSC application. As a very new feature um, inside of Twinkit Analytics, um, there's also the capability to automatically generate a Twinkit HMI project, as you see here. And this allows you to automatically create an HMI dashboard application that shows the results of your analytics network. And I think this is a very nice scenario for Twinkit Cloud Engineering because it shows the, the powerful mechanisms of our analytics platform and you can operate this in the cloud and have it available 24-7. Okay, so now that we've seen what the application looks like, it might be a good idea to show the viewers out there how TwinCat Cloud Engineering looks from the inside. Mm -hmm. That's a very good idea. So I brought a, a short video, um, and this video basically shows you how this platform yeah, looks like and how it, how it feels like when you connect to it. So basically, um, the, the first web page that you see when you connect to the platform is the login page. Of course, you can use your own user credentials um, there to log in to the, to the dashboard. Um, and then you will see on the dashboard, you will see an overview of all the Twinkit Cloud engineering instances that you have currently rented. Um, and you can interact with those instances or create additional instances as you uh, seem appropriate for your automation project. So right here, you see two instances available. Uh, one instance, which is called Machine A, and another one, which is called Demo. And both instances, of course, have metadata. So they have a public IP address, they have an ID, which is unique. Um, they have a usage time, so how long have you used an instance uh, within a billing period. Um, you also have Twinket-related data available, like the Twinket version that has been installed in the instance, um, or the Twinket system ID. So different parameters um, that you require when you're working with Twinket in order to create your automation project. So as you see here, you can also start or stop an instance um, or um, what you see now, you can create a new instance and it shows you a, a dialog where you can set, uh, select from, a dif from different operating system images um, which have different Twinket versions installed. So you can also go back um, to, to older Twinket versions if you like, uh, instantiate them, create them and then uh, work with them for your automation project. As you see here, um, you can also have a view on what's inside of the instance, so which software components have been installed, um, and then you'd simply click on the Create button in order to start the provisioning process. 
So this provisioning process takes about three to four minutes, so which is very fast. And after the instance has been provisioned, you can uh, click on the Connect button in order to open this new web browser window that I talked about earlier and have the remote desktop connection available um, to this particular Twinkle Cloud engineering instance and work with it to create your automation project. You see here that inside of this instance, of course, you can work with Twinket as if it is installed on your regular laptop. So you see that here Twinket version 3.1 uh, build 4024.10 has been installed um, according with uh, several other parameters. So the question is, after I have provisioned this instance and I want to work with it, how can I exchange files with this instance? So there is a file explorer tool that we have integrated into our website and it is making use of SSH mechanisms, so a standard protocol for file transfer. And you can log into this instance using this file explorer and then you can um, see the, the file system of this Twinkle Cloud engineering instance and you can upload files, download files, um, you can change directories, so everything that you know from your regular Windows Explorer, for example, um, you can also do using this File Explorer application. There may be customers who say, well, this File Explorer application inside of a web page is fine, but I would like to use my, my own tools, my own on-premise SSH client for that. You can also do so. So there is, for example, on Windows, there is a client which is called uh, WinSCP. It's an SSH client and you can also use this uh, software tool to connect to an instance and um, see its file system, upload files and download files. So here, um, as an example, I would like to upload a file. So this is uh, a software setup for a tool which is called UA Expert. And I would like to upload this tool now to the Twinkle Cloud Engineering instance because I want to install it there. So as you see here, the, down, the, the upload speed is uh, pretty good. It's of course limited to the internet upload rate that you currently have in your internet connection. Um, but the virtual machines in the cloud have a very good connection to the internet. Um, so the bottleneck is, is typically the internet uh, connection at your uh, office system. Okay, so now that the file has been uploaded, um, we now want to check within the instance if it is available there. Um, so we open the Windows Explorer, we go to the uh, temp directory on the C drive, and there we will find our application that we just uploaded via SSH. Okay, great. So the next use case that I would like to show here is um, how can I connect my on-premise hardware, my physical controller hardware, um, to this Twinket Cloud engineering instance. So right now I'm in Twinket XAE, our engineering environment, which is based on Visual Studio. And I now would like to um, connect my physical controller to this particular instance. So what do I need to do? F so first of all, I would like to create an ADS over MQTT connection, which means I need to have a certificate to connect to the message broker in that instance. So this is what I do here now. So there's also a mechanism on the website available that lets you generate a certificate. Um, you set a name for this certificate, ADS over MQTT in this example, and a validity, which is uh, 365 days. So the certificate generation takes a couple of seconds, and then the certificate files are downloaded as a zip archive in the background uh, by the web browser, which you see here. And I can then open this zip file and extract all the certificate files from it and place them in a uh, local directory on your physical controller hardware. So the directory itself is um, doesn't really matter. So I would al I always like to use a directory um, uh, below the Twinket installation directory, for example, C Twinket 3.1 config certificates. So this is where I have placed my certificates now. And now I can also generate an ADS over MQTT configuration file for Twinket. So, which you see here. So, the XML, uh, the ADS over MQTT configuration file is XML based. You can download it here. You have to place it in a, in a certain directory inside of Twinket. And then you have to modify it a little bit in order to, um, yeah, to tell this configuration file where the certificate files have been stored that we just generated and downloaded um, 
from the website. So I open the um, configuration file here. I set those three parameters, so the CA certificate file, the client certificate file, and the client key file. So I enter this information here. Then I save this ADS over MQTT configuration file. And the last thing that I need to do is I have to restart Twincat once so that the new configuration file is loaded and the ADS over MQTT route is established to the Twincat Cloud Engineering instance. So now I switch back to my web browser. Um, I open my remote desktop session here again. And when I now switch to my Twinket XAE application, I now see that there is a new uh, physical hardware device um, available. And I also see this uh, small symbol in front of it, which means that it is a secure connection. So I select my device and I now would like to deploy this Twinket automation project that I have currently opened here um, to my physical hardware. And as you can see, it's the regular workflow that you also know from, from working with Twinket on a, in an on-premise version, right? So you connect to the target device, you activate the configuration, then you download the configuration. And then, as you see here, you log into the PSC application in order to see what's going on, to, de to do debugging, uh, to set breakpoints maybe. And yeah, basically work with your automation project as if you were sitting right next to the machine. So now we have seen that there is a message broker available within each instance and we can use this message broker for an ADS over MQTT uh, connection between physical controller hardware and the Twinket Cloud Engineering instance. But there might be other use cases as well. So for example, use cases in which you want to send telemetry data uh, from a physical device via MQTT to the message broker in order to, to analyze the data or forward the data to other cloud applications. So what I brought here is um, a small demo application which is using Twinket IoT, our Twinket function package that you can use to establish a connection to the cloud. So in order to connect this uh, demo application um, to the message broker, we have to follow the same procedure as we did before with ADS over MQTT. So first thing is we create a certificate for the Twinket application. We download the certificate here as a zip archive again. Then we extract um, the certificate files to a directory on the controller. Again, which can be the same directory as before or which can be a totally different directory, doesn't really matter. And after that, we need to reference those certificate files within the Twinkit application, which you see here. And then we can activate this configuration um, to connect to the message broker and send telemetry data. So let's see how, how this looks like. So we have activated the configuration now. Now we restart Twincat into run mode. And after that, we can log into the PSC application to see the status of our MQTT connection to the message broker. So here we have our function block for the MQTT client. And as you see, the connection has been successfully established and messages are being sent with telemetry data to the MQTT message broker within a Twinket Cloud Engineering instance. So Sven, we have literally taken Twinket and we have put it in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Simply, I mean, I'm sure that meant a lot of development on your side, of course, but uh, it looks quite simple. So it is quite seamless and we have established a secure communication to the controller. So we can seamlessly actually use this instance in the cloud to program the PLC and taking advantage of all the normal functionalities that we have in, within Twincat. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Well, 1996, we introduced Twincat for the first time. Since then, we've had a lot of important milestones. One of the very important ones was 2010 where we introduced Twincat 3 and actually integrated it into Visual Studio. And now, 2020, we have another important milestone. We brought Twincat 3 into the cloud, which became Twincat 
cloud engineering.